Welcome to the Why Not 3 podcast, where you get the behind the scenes of achieving a work-life balance with peak performance. Hey there, and welcome to episode 5, where we're going to discuss how to use your business to grow yourself. And I have Anthony with me, and I've actually met him a couple of years ago. We Skyped um, a couple of times, and we discussed, um, yeah, you you had a coaching business at the time. You had just released your book. Um, I'm releasing my book now. So tell the audience a little bit about yourself. I have been fascinated for the past three and a half years now, after taking a year away from school and university or anything about human potential and self-expansion and that's been reflected in my business now I'm working with people but I'm obsessed with the development of the self and creating a life that is pretty epic true and what have you because you've accomplished some big stuff um, so I mean writing a book is pretty big a lot of people have it on their bucket list um, yeah. you've you're not from Europe you're from New Zealand you're <laughs> yeah, here man, I'm now a Kiwi. I'm yeah. a Kiwi. so tell tell the audience a little bit of what you have done already a little bit more practical for them to grasp for sure uh, well after I went through this period when I had no insight into personal development or anything I left university after nine weeks I was walking to university and I just had this feeling like what I'm learning doesn't apply to my life and so there was a business that interested me um, a friend had introduced me to network marketing and I was just blown away by it there's another way and so within about a week I decided I was going to leave New Zealand move to Australia where this company was and in Australia I went through a period where just everything changed over a period of about six months I had well I started doing a bit bit more of what I love I started meeting people from all around the world you know within myself I'd expanded a lot I just saw life in a new way I was happier than ever before and so pretty naturally I started sharing and teaching that and and that's when I kind of started coaching and stuff so in a pretty short period of time I just was so into sharing this message that I'd learned bring it to other people so yeah I, I, I wrote the book that you told me about when I was 20 which was kind of everything I'd learned up until that time I created a course I taught a few workshops and stuff but my thing was always working one-to-one with people and actually being with them in the process of, of their growth too and then the last um, year and a half has been a lot of deepening on myself and going even further into my own understanding which has mean I've traveled through Southeast Asia now I've traveled through Europe over the last three months there was living in Australia um, then there was traveling through Bali and India and Sri Lanka and now I'm gonna be basing myself in Germany do you ever do you ever regret not um, going to university taking the path less travel not at all like for me that's the decision leaving university was like I you know, people say like the best decision I ever made. It was the decision that unfolded the rest of my life because at that point it was such a clear, like intuitive sense that I can keep doing this, but something's not right here. And that decision always leads to another decision, but that was the unfolding of all that's happened in the last three and a half, well, three and a half years now. And so my friends, um, you know, from them, like now I would be basically have just finished university. But if I look at the experience and the change, the relationships, everything I've learned in this time like to me it feels like a lifetime of, of like wisdom and learning in, yeah. in these three years that yeah I didn't go to university true I, I'm actually on the other side <laughs> I want I want people to experience university mm. just because it expands the potential of your mind as for like, sure. it pushes you so much it's like going to the gym for your brain well this is interesting because you learned so much through university right which was awesome because that was relevant in your yeah. path yeah right? you, you loved it for me it was obviously not relevant so that's awesome because I would never tell someone to leave yeah. university and, but if they were disconnected from it you know not fulfilled uncertain not learning true, diff- true. Different I agree yeah that's awesome that we got you have to find your path um, and you found that the path by not going there and was it tough in the beginning or was it just a release freedom suddenly you know, I think about it on the surface because in a sense I left New Zealand, I didn't know anyone in Sydney where I went. I had one friend I'd made online who happened to be like a badass young entrepreneur who taught me so much. 
and an auntie that I lived with until I found found a place, managed to get my job translated to Sydney, so I was working just eight hours a week, which paid my bills. But I just had this vi- like this vision, I think. I just had so much energy behind me at the time, so I didn't really come into playing small. You know, I, I guess it could have been if I went with a different attitude, but there was so much energy behind going there that I was more like excited and trying out new things. Like, yeah, so different cool. stuff. But so you had a job that funded you and paid your bills while you were doing that. Yeah, I had a good setup. <laughs> so I, I was I was working for Nespresso at the time, this coffee company, and yeah. doing promotion work for them, and they pay you really well. So you get a yeah. job eight hours a week, and you know, I don't know, two hundred fifty bucks a week is enough to That's like very good, yeah. fund a basic life for sure to start doing other stuff on the side. And to me, time was like the most important thing. Exactly. So in essence. Because there's like a lot of stories that people leave universities and then this is the part that I don't like where they start leeching off of people. But you actually had a job and yeah, you were sure. working towards a vision, which is the yeah. reason you're like at this point in your life, of course. Yeah, for sure. So that that's great. Thanks <laughs> yeah. for sharing that. Um, <laughs> for sure. But yeah, it's good also because we have a young audience sometimes, so then they know the reality behind. Well, we're pretty young, man. Between us, yeah, what, forty-five but years old. But people that are in school <laughs> and they, I, like, I can imagine when I was in school as well, I would look up at all these people and be like, "How do you travel all around the world? How do you not study in university and have a business?" Um, because I, I actually went through university because I wanted that piece of paper, but seeing people like you, like how do you make it real and then you made it now practical well this the thing because i was you know like i've become really intuitive over the last year and a half but i'm also incredibly practical like at the time like i think people have a bigger image they always make something harder until they look directly at actually what it takes i mean travel now if you want you can couch surf in every country in the world meet yeah. awesome people stay in i've stayed in some beautiful beautiful homes couch surfing you can get a flight you know, pretty much anywhere in the world for 400 bucks at the right yeah, time. True. You know, like traveling is cheap. In Europe, you can even travel for five euros <laughs> with Ryan. Yeah, there, yeah, so. right. So I think what, like deciding on what you want and then actually just looking at, you know, not just putting it out there and like, oh, I can't do that. Like actually like looking directly at it and finding out that you pretty much can. So living your passion. Pretty much, yeah, man. and then not, not putting it off, not putting it off for so long, for sure. True, which actually brings us to the first kind of subtopic, which is fears. <laughs> yeah. Um, how would you describe like? And do you still have fears? What were the fears when you started? Oh, fears is awesome. Fears is like the juiciest part of personal development because, like, to me, I think we have an image like fear. You get over it, and you're free. But to me, the scale of your fear is just what grows. So, so when I started, I had many fears. Like the theme for my life has been the fear of rejection and always wanting acceptance from other people. So following your passion when you've got your family going against you, your friends questioning you, like yeah. rejection and acceptance has been a big theme for me. Now I've come so, so, so far in myself, but I still have fears, but the levels of them are totally different. So it's like, you know, maybe you're first of just even telling your friends about something and then in the future it's talking to say a big business owner or something in your relationship so to me the the fear itself is always there i mean you must have the same thing yeah. you you it's like the comfort zone fear is just the edge of your comfort zone right or the edge of your belief system what you think your own self worth is or what you feel like you need and as you grow you still have fears i i think you talk to i mean i think tony robbins claims he doesn't have any fears anymore but like <laughs> you know, I think we all have fears and True. when you can accept and embrace it like we look at fear as such a bad thing or such a problem but if we can learn from our fears they're our biggest teachers hands down and so now fear is something I've embraced and actually gotten excited about because it shows me oh if this is just an illusion it's not actually real it shows me where my work on myself is yeah if, I've, I've, I'm, if I'm afraid of you know asking someone for business or asking out this girl or even investing some money in something or whatever and I feel fear I don't say that bad I go okay there's some learning here for me now yeah. so that's the difference that's the sure. practical part I mean the biggest breakthroughs for me ha- have been when I was fearing something and it's that <laughs> yeah. that put a fire under my ass and I pretty much worked even harder because of it yeah um, and well, that's what were some of the big things that, that that you feared 
True. Like over the last when, two years. When I share, uh, what I shared actually in the 30 day challenge, um, I, one of the biggest breakthroughs that I had was my mentor was doing a workshop in New York and he was doing a tour all over the, all over the US and New York was the closest to Belgium where I was living at the time and I barely had any money at the time. This was a couple of years ago. Um, like I was struggling. I just had a sa I just got a sales job based on commission and he was asking like 1500 bucks just for the workshops and I still had to pay the flights and yeah, like sure. for me this was unreal but I knew that it could potentially be the next level for me nice. but it was so scary I put the deposit yeah I put the deposit down um, not knowing if I could actually pay the entire trip um, but it was that period um, three months until I had to pay the full price that I actually smashed the internal like record of commission sales in that yeah, company badass. and without the fear it would not never have happened and I think it kind of defines business and entrepreneurship we always move towards that fear and we push ourselves there where it hurts um, and that's where our breakthroughs happen because if you I think one of my mentors once told me um, if you want to be successful think of the scariest thing that everybody's afraid of and just do that yeah that's where I start that's why I started doing sales because I knew everybody that's awesome feared that Th this is awesome because you use sales as a tool for personal growth yeah to me I use my entire life as a tool for personal growth so I look at my relationships with different people in my life I look at my passions I look at my business the things I fear the things I love whatever and I look at it all and be like okay this is all like in a sense a game for my own expansion can you give an example relationships or business or oh both man okay sure so i'll give i'll try to give one from both like things that i've learned so much because i think we're two two of the biggest teachers in terms of the path of like accelerating ourselves. if we're conscious with it is business and intimate relationships other relationships too but for me like the fear of rejection and needing acceptance and my own self-worth was reflected so much in my business so i had the passion to serve people and help people grow and expand which ironically I could only help them as far as I'd gone and yeah. so I never fully put myself out there in the world I would never you know ask people to do work with me or pay me what I wanted because of my own insecurities around fear and being rejected I would never go and talk to girls that you know I really wanted to talk to so now that I embrace it I look to that, that what's that decision or what's that action that is right at the edge of my fear and so now with business and stuff like okay I'm scared of doing that thing so I've got to do it I'm scared of asking this person to you know come and do coaching with me so it's like a game I gotta do it I gotta do it and and then in relationships it's it's not as direct but like definitely the thing about like rejection shows up in my relationship because if, if I want to I don't know just go out and do something or I want to do something and you know my girlfriend thinks that's not a cool idea or she doesn't want to do it because I still have this part in myself I actually feel like something bad bad has happened so when that happens it's like a oh this is an opportunity to bring like self-love and acceptance and move through that so in the relationship all of our own like doubts and fears are being reflected back to us and same thing in the business the same thing happens so when we can stop projecting a problem and then start projecting an opportunity game changer because it's all a game now we start welcoming it into our space yeah that's what I keep hearing from like every entrepreneur that I meet it's just like a game you just push there where it hurts. You got it, man. Yeah. You got it because at some point it stops hurting. You you stop defining it as pain. True. You stop saying, "Oh, I'm never gonna be good enough." I'm not. You just think, "Oh, okay, this is where I'm. This is the edge of my comfort zone." Maybe you need support. You know, you need like a coach. Maybe you need the right people in your life to support you taking on these fears and challenges. But when you actually stop labeling it as a problem and as an opportunity, yeah. Like. Let, guess, let's yeah. get let's get really practical and then kind of sure, close right. this off. Um, in we we define life in why not three into health, wealth, and relationships. Health. I've, we talked about this yeah. already. So um, if we get really practical, we talked about fear, mm -hmm. about um, choosing your own path when you chose not to go to university. For sure. um, in health, wealth, and relationships, if you go really practical, what would you advise? to the audience, young or old, doesn't matter. Um, if 
it was like one exercise or one thing <laughs> that they would do for each area or what? Yeah, just help. Like for instance, I'll go first, and then you yeah, can go. Then you can think of that. <laughs> so for me, um, in health, this is the most important part, and and what most of the people actually miss in Why Not Three, and what I try to convey in the thirty day challenge by filming my entire day and just showing you that it's not all glam. It's just a lot of boring stuff as well. Um, in health, like you need to track yourself and you need to have these moments where you plug out, which is the silent day. By practicing the silent day, combined with the mindset that I gave in the first week of the 30 day challenge, which is the power of consistency. Um, so if you do every Sunday silent day, after three months, you suddenly become more grounded. It compounds into making you better with yourself, which makes your health better. So my most practical tip is always the silent day in health, um, because everything's connected, and that will ground you and also That's help awesome. you silent with external awesome. stuff. Um, in wealth, um, I always say that if people want to build a business, is always start now. Why postpone it? <laughs> Just do a little bit every day. Okay. It'll compound as well. When I started, I did not even an hour a day, and it just started compounding, and then we started getting bigger and bigger clients, until at one point I just lost a really big client because I had exams, and, and that's, <laughs> that's like the moment where I, I suddenly yeah. thought, oh, damn, I can do this full time. Um, so, so, never, so already start doing something, and in the 30 day challenge, again, I, I share in the last week pretty much how you can already start doing the first steps. Pretty much how I do the landing pages for the multinationals we work with in my main company, how we start driving traffic, like what we do exactly, how we do the branding for them. Um, and then relationships is if you have a relationship, do a relationship review. And even if you just have close friends, do a relationship review with them. I got this trick from Darren Hardy. Nice. I don't know if you know him. Yeah, he's that awesome. Yeah, so what he does is every week, no matter what, he sits down with his uh, wife now, and he just has like this simple like system where he just asks, so how did you feel about the week? And they rate each other and everything. And I've been doing this since the beginning in, in my relationship. And it's literally like the reason we got this far, because I used to have really like it would just end really abruptly with me in relationships and somehow this little thing fixed it because there's more open space to talk to and i always advise all my clients to start rela relationship review it's so simple yeah, but so cool. effective nice okay cool i can relate to that so what well, is fun. fun all right so i'll share my things for health wealth relationships i think that the biggest thing that you pointed out, you talked about the consistency, right? So yeah. for me, expansion on anything, in all areas of life, whether it's health, whether it's your business, whether it's yourself or relationships, there's momentum to it. So the more momentum you generate, the more momentum you generate. Yeah. That's why getting started on starting one habit, one change, is in a sense going against the unconscious momentum which dominates most people's lives and creating some sort of conscious momentum. So with that in mind, um, so for health, is yourself health to me is yourself so you got to have some part of your day where you have time for yourself like a silent day is you just grounding fully in yourself you're present with your own thoughts where your own feelings are at you can like adjust everything within yourself yeah. and so for me my, my thing was every single day like even with my clients now I'll tell them multiple times throughout the day stop and actually like do like just feel what's going on within yourself but for getting started is having some form of ritual, whether that be five, 10, 15, 20 minutes a day, where you're by yourself. Even that can be walking and listening to some music. It can be meditation. It can be going through gratitude, where you just disconnect from everything and fully be present with yourself. Most people that go on like a you know meditation retreat or something, they just can't believe what happens because they just like get to see what's going on within themselves. Sure. It's crazy. So definitely for health, it's being with yourself, doing something every day where you just fully integrated with yourself. To me, the second one is passion, which is exactly, I would say the exact same thing which you said is just go, just start, because everything else is just theory until you start and yeah. put it in experience. True. And truly the reason most people don't start 
is they they talk about logics not being lined up and what, but it's just fear. Like hands down, like people don't start because of fear, money, right people, wrong stuff, not enough website. But it's really just some sort of fear being projected. So when you can be straight and truthful with yourself, the reason you're not starting making one small step of action is some form of fear, right? Yeah. And then relationships. This might not necessarily be as, as practical, which I think your one is awesome because it's getting a clear picture of where are we at, what's challenging you, what's challenging me. But I would say when we stop projecting our own, like we yeah. all get triggered in relationships. Yeah. No matter, like I've got the most epic relationship ever and I still get triggered. I still feel frustrated from time to time. But the biggest shift in me for relationships in all relationships, business and intimate, is when you feel triggered, when you feel challenged, not projecting it on the other person yeah. at them, but seeing that because of them, you feel this way. So in my relationship, say I feel frustrated at something, I know that my girlfriend has triggered that within me, but it's not about her. It's about something going on within myself, a belief within myself. True. And when we start looking at ourselves and how we're reacting to the environment outside of us, our learning accelerates like this. Yeah. And same thing, the relationship goes so much deeper when both people are willing to look at themselves to go, how is this showing me something? Yeah. And this is where the responsibility comes in, but the moment we start doing that, we're like, shit, this belief that I've held throughout my life is now being experienced in my relationship, and I keep thinking it's that person, but really, I've got to clear yeah. this out within myself. So those are the, those are the three things. Great, end, great. Right? Uh, thank you so much. This was, I think, this was amazing. Awesome. Uh, Content-wise, really practical. Uh, where can people find you? At the moment, website will be coming like the next year. Um, Facebook.com forward slash your friend Anthony. We can connect. I love cool. having conversations. But your with book people. is still online, right? Yeah, book is still online. Uh, I got to write a new one, man. Like the last year and a half has been totally like. <laughs> so much has changed so the way I teach has changed but yeah you can find it it's called live more achieve more become more it's on um, Amazon and basically I talked about that it's the you've got your three pillars health wealth relationships I talked about live achieve become as the three pillars that define our life like living which is soaking up the experience of life to travel to meet people just to live an experience and then achieve is cultivating our own gifts and sharing that with the world yeah. and then becoming is the path of expansion through all of that through the experience and through that your passion great. so yeah cool um i'll link everything down below um thank you so much for joining us and i'll see you soon for the next episode and hopefully in the 30-day challenge as well yeah